Okay, I'll take the. Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Hey guys, so we just got breaking news that Simon Godbadia was deported back to Africa as Portia heads back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. What did you hear about this? I mean, what did you read about this? So let's see here. So I found an article and not that I got a chance to read the whole article, but what's standing out here is that apparently Simon was denied citizenship 
Oh, I um, like Freeman. He he was a good guy and he was a good fit for Portia too. As her husband, he catered to her, you know what I'm saying? He got her that big mm -hmm. old ring. Um, he was doing what he was supposed to do, but it was something else bigger that he had to take care of than, than before he could take care of that. But, you know, I hope Portia is handling this okay because, you know, Portia, I always liked her on the show, Real Housewives of Atlanta, and I'm going to watch it if she's on there still. Um, I'm sad that Candy had to go, but can you read what you heard on this? So, uh, but let me just mention, I don't know if he was deported, but I, this article oh, is, is, let's see. Allegedly. Let's see when this article, because usually, so this, this, this article is from, what's, out, what's today? The article is from the 18th. So, because usually when they make a decision, I think they have a couple of days before they're deported. So the article, so what the article is basically saying is that Simon had tried several attempts to gain citizenship. It says that his journey started in I think this is 1982 when he arrived at with a child visa. Mm -hmm. It says, however, this this entry, rather than being a start, rather than being a start of a straightforward immigrant, it takes down it takes a journey where he was involved in a lot of fraud and false identities. By 1991. He was considered 19 by 1991. He was considered um, he had he was considered of having illegal entry into the country. They said he overstayed his visa. Mm. So now remember, they said he arrived in 82. Mm -hmm. So in all in about 10 years, he he had overstayed his visa. It says uh, Gabodia found himself on the wrong side of the law and was ordered to be deported. The mm -hmm. following year, in a move that would be set for stage for later in legal battles, he was physically removed from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yet the narrative did not end there, demonstrating resilience or perhaps recklessness that would define his actions. Gabodia managed to re-enter into the U.S., this time under a different identity. Uh oh. Though this was a new, uh, no, though this was a new alias, he obtained a green card by a fraudulent name, mm. effectively becoming a permanent citizen resident. He became a permanent resident under a, a under a fraudulent name. Mm. And this um, this gained attention to the immigration authorities. It says, so I'm I'm pausing here because I'm just skipping through some of the articles, so I don't have to read everything. And it says the layers of Simon Gabadia's past began to unravel further when it was revealed that his path to supposed legitimacy was paved with multiple felonies, including bank fraud, credit card fraud, and identity theft. Now we all kind of know from Teresa Judice. You, do you know who she is, bro? Yeah, Bron? Real Housewives of uh, New Jersey, right? Yes. Now remember, Teresa and her husband served time in prison for uh, mortgage fraud or something, right? Mm -hmm. Her husband, uh, as maybe some of the audience knows. So Teresa went in first. Teresa did one year. She said she never knew what she was signing. She didn't know it was fraudulent, blah, blah, blah. Teresa did a year. She came back home. And then after that, her husband served his term, which was four years. He served four years. But when he kept, but he didn't get to come back home. When he finished those four years, I said, hey, you're not a legal citizen. Even though he had been here since he was two years old. Mm. He never tried to. It, now he's a different situation than Simon. That was just pure laziness. Even Teresa's dad, God bless his soul, said it. That was pure, pure laziness because if you didn't get it while you were a teenager, you at least could have gotten it while you were married to this citizen. Mm -hmm. So that was laziness, and that that's that's people that be doing these white collar crimes thinking they can get away with it. So, anyways, I found out he he had been illegally in the country for almost four, 40 years and 
they would not release him back to his family. He had to be released to Italy. So they sent him back to Italy. Currently, he's living in the Bahamas because he wants to be closer to his kids. But he is not allowed entry back into the U.S. Do you know why? Because he committed fraud. Mm. So now this article is saying that Simon committed fraud. Mm. I don't know how he how he would ever get a citizenship. I don't care if he did marry, you know, the uh, the granddaughter of a civil rights leader, leader Portia, mm. who didn't know there was who didn't know that the underground the underground railroad was not actually underground hey watch it i think she did she was just being facetious no she mm -hmm. wasn't being facetious no she had a she had what i don't know what you call it i think it was like a brain slip she really didn't know she wasn't being facetious she was not if you watch that clip she was not you know how there's moments i call them having like blonde moments there's like moments where somebody might say like, oh, there's 50 states. I really thought there was 48. Okay. Oh, she, yeah, I get she, it. I get it. <laughs> she was just, ha she was having a blind moment, but it's mm -hmm. kind of embarrassing being the fact that yeah. her granddaughter, yeah, her grandfather or whatever. But you know, you know she, it's she like, really address that and, and, and talk about it as much as the blondes did. I don't think she does. I think she totally kind of wiped it off, like brushed it off. I think she, she, Andy had her on because she had to address it because her grandfather she, is Hosea Williams. He was right. side by side with MLK. So she did try to address it. I don't think she can. I think that interview that she did years ago trying to address it didn't help. But what has helped is she definitely is a different woman now. She's smarter. Yeah. She's, you see her doing more stuff for the community. Mm -hmm. And I think I think maybe she's just learned. It's kind of like Beyonce to me. Like, you know how when Beyonce first came out, people would say she sounded like a fifth grader. Yeah. I think sometimes like when you're a celebrity, you 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 hear those critiques. Yeah. And yeah. you take them in, you know you're a public figure, you know that you're the way you appear in public, you wanna you wanna appear a certain way. Now when you hear Beyonce speak. Speak. She doesn't sound like a fifth grader. I'm not yes. saying she sounded like a fifth grader, but I am. I'm a country girl, so I understand coming from the country. People yeah. sometimes associate the way you sound with intelligence, right. and that is not true. That is not true at all. But Beyonce, she did. You know, like she sounds totally different now. Not totally, but she still has that husky voice. Yeah, because she 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 internalized it and she. Correct yeah, like, you know, I can, I yeah, can relate to that, but like being from the south, we do have slang, we do, we do have uh accents, we do have everything, right? Has, some people didn't even think that I was from Florida, from the south, they thought yeah. I was from Florida when I went to Louisiana. You see, what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah, it all depends on your background and how you grew up in the south, too, because like. It's a lot of people who, who are black who speak proper and who enunciate their words, and some of them don't. And it doesn't mean that they're not stupid. I mean, they're not stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not. It, it doesn't equate. Yeah. It doesn't equate intelligence, yeah. and that's what yeah. like some of the world, the, not the world, but some of like parts of the U.S. don't get yeah. just because you're from the South and right. you sound you got a little twang. That don't mean. That you're stupid, and obviously right. Beyonce right. isn't stupid. Right. Like, but I can see why she, they're saying, like, look at how we were just going over Ernesto and how he speaks. He speaks very slow and country. I'm sorry. He, and he it, it I'm gives sorry. off he, vibes of slowness. Of uh, to me, that's he's slow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm just intellectually I'm have to go slow. back. <laughs> yes. Slow. Yes. So this, so the article says that um, so it was credit card fraud, um, and it says that so he has submitted like several applications for citizenship, mm -hmm. and they were all denied. Um, it says these revelations came to light during his applications for the U.S. citizenship application that would be denied, and and not once but twice. Initially in 2016, he attempted naturalization. It was rejected due to his permanent resident status that was unlawfully granted. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And it says he filed another application in 2020 only to face a denial once again. And be because he had became a citizen unlawfully, a, a law, he had unlawfully became a permanent citizen. That, that was their reason for denying it. Mm -hmm. they, they say here in a final bid to overturn these series of rejections, Gabodia filed a complaint in 2023 asking the court to vacate the denial and grant him U.S. citizenship. However, this plea was dismissed in 2024 with the court pointing out to him his criminal past and his illegal entry into the country. Mm -hmm. It says those barriers uh, those barriers were just, it, it was just too, it was a large amount of uh, barriers that caused the courts to uh, once again reject his claim, overturn mm -hmm. their decision to give him citizenship. Mm -hmm. So um, it says for Portia Williams and her family, this ruling casts a shadow over their future, raising questions about the implication of Gabodia's legal status and their lives in Atlanta. It also thrusts them into the center of public discourse on immigration, identity, and redemption. Topics that resonate far beyond the realm of reality TV. In a broader context, Gabodia's ordeal is a narrative that is complex for American immigration. It highlights the delicate balance between the pursuit of justice and the quest for a better life, between the letter of law and human stories intertwined with its application. As the dust settles on the chapter of Gabodia's life, one thing remains clear, the path to citizenship for those who veer off its legal course with hurdles that are not easily to overcome. So the article is just basically also giving a warning to anybody out there who is seeking citizenship. Mm -hmm. While you are in the process of seeking US citizenship, you cannot commit crimes. Exactly. You cannot get you 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 know. It, so I don't. So he he at this point, he's definitely being deported. Like he he definitely he's definitely not gonna be here over the summer. Mm -hmm. If he is, then I don't know. Somehow they doing with. They're, 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 oof, that's a lot. Yeah, because. And where he made his big, where I think where this, where the biggest mistake is, all uh, he got caught. He obviously was guilty, so th there's no need to say alleged, because this is they're showing that the court denied him citizenship because he was found guilty of bank fraud and credit card fraud. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And then on top of that, they have proof that you have multiple aliases and one of those aliases you use to gain permanent mm -hmm. residency in the US. Mm -hmm. And you, and, and I hate to say this, this is not Braun's opinion, but it's mine. Sometimes I feel like from my experience, and this is not, I'm not speaking about every African or Caribbean person, but sometimes I feel like they think they could come over here and they're smarter than like black Americans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they have a bet, they have better means maybe financially or the smarts to get into the system. But so if you, you don't know what you, they had to go through and what they went through and did and done before they even got over here. But what they don't, what I feel, what I feel like is, you know, don't discount, don't discount what us black Americans that are here, what we have done. And the reason why you are even able to come here, it is partially because of us. the ancestors that we are like connected to tightly mm -hmm. paved the way. Yes. So like, don't, don't like play in our face. Like we mean nothing. Cause I had one, and this is just, I'm just speaking from my experience, not for every African or Caribbean person that's not a citizen or whatever. But I had one guy just saying like, he said, um, he, he said to me like, oh, you know, white people like, they like us better than they like you black Americans. And I said, okay. I said, no, they see us all the same. They see skin color. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, they see us all the same. 
Mm-hmm. And he had no respect for us. He, his kids were born here. He was not going to teach them anything, even though they were being born here. They're, you know, they're truly African American, if you want to use that term. Right. He was not, he said he was not teaching them black history. Mm. He said it would only be African. And I, I and then when I was living back in Florida, I had this this uh Jamaican guy in the DMV tell me this was during like the time what when Trayvon, what happened to Trayvon Martin. He told me like white people are coming in here apologizing for Trayvon Martin, and I'm telling them like I'm Jamaican. I'm like, that's your nationality, though. Mm-hmm. You're still black. He was like, yeah, but I'm not the same as you. So I was like, but he's a human being and he's mm-hmm. black. Exactly. He's like, yeah, but I'm Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> so please, where does it say Jamaican on an application? Anyway, right. Anyway. And see, Simon thought because he had that money mm-hmm. and he got Porsche mm-hmm. and Porsche, I don't even even that uh Teresa Teresa, you know, the the housewife yeah. in New Jersey, uh-huh. she asked Trump, she asked Trump to help her get out and nobody to help her hus- her husband, her ex-husband oh. gain nope. his citizenship. No, he was t- I told you he got deported. Mm-hmm. He's he can't even come. He has he has four daughters and they right. are daddy's girls, and they're doing very well. And um, he, the, he, he, they deported him back to Italy. So what he's done is he's relocated to the Bahamas because apparently it's easy to get citizenship. Mm-hmm. And um, he lives in the Bahamas because that way it's closer to his girls. It's a closer plane trip, you know, right. for, for his girls to come see him. Right. Wow. But he, he, he's not allowed entry back in the U.S. Mm. And his his parents are in the U.S. That's but see, that was la- that was laziness on his part. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I know he's he going through it. <laughs> like, yeah. Dang. Yep. Missing That's why his girl. Good to procrastinate. <laughs> yep. And I mean, he had the money. You know, he yeah. had the money to to do all that. And even if you ain't have the money, you your wife, she's a citizen. Yeah. yeah. And Teresa said, my dad, she said, every so often, my dad would remind him, why haven't you gotten your citizenship yet? But I guess, you know, I guess if you think you think that, you know, you're going through life and nothing has happened to you yet, you you think you're invincible. And unfortunately, I think um, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't I mean, I don't wish any bad for Portia and, and her family, you know, and Simon, but being on this reality show, mm-hmm. there ain't no way these government agents are going to let you get by now. Because mm. you, you're now shining a the light. There's yeah. no way they're going to do that. Do, have you seen how many what, how many um, cases have happened with these reality TV? Look at the, the other lady from Salt Lake. She's in prison now doing six years for fraud. Mm. The one that was married to the black man on Salt Lake. And all those years of this lady living this rich life, the government never knew about her. Now all of a sudden she on the reality show and she gets caught. That's stupid. Dang. That's stupid. And why did that lady named Mary go to jail? Remember her? Mary? She was a black lady on one of those New York um, housewives. Boy, I was watching those throw. You know how they have those throwbacks of the Real Housewives. I don't know a Mary. That went this to jail. lady, she was had a congregation. She was a pastor. Oh, that's Salt Lake. That's Salt Lake. She didn't go to jail. Oh, she didn't go to jail. I, mm-hmm. I she, thought she went to jail. No, she she she's in Salt Lake, and she's a pastor because she said she inherited her church. She married her step grandfather. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. She's something they write about her. I ain't yeah, she's her. still she's still married to them. They have a kid together. Oh, so really she married her grandma. Her grandmother was like this rich black woman in Salt Lake, like one of the richest black women in Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. From her church, and she made great. Her grandmother made great business moves. 
So her grandmother let her inherit it, inherit like most of the money, but she claims that part of it was she had to marry her uh, grandmother's husband. So she's married to her step grandfather. Yep. Dang. And they have a child together. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he always <laughs> Methuselah. Oh, girl, he looked old, too. Mm. And I, I don't think nothing's going down with them anymore, but they're still married, and they have a son. I hope he wasn't messing with her when she was younger. You know what I mean? Battery up, huh? <laughs> it, well, the phone, my personal phone, I can't charge it um, with the USB because there's some kind of water damage. Oh, yeah. So I have okay. to put it on the, um, you know, the flat charger. Mm-hmm. And it oh, just yeah. takes a long time to charge. It usually charges overnight. Okay. But I thought I had it sitting on the charger. But anyways, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, read your text and then um, see what I said. Okay. You, did you send it to... You got to... Yeah, I'll send it to your main number. You see it? You see what I said? Let me see. Oh. Okay. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Hold on. And remember, um, I will be editing out all the extra space on this video, but um, yeah, we just like to share the informa information, the entertainment news. This is a <laughs> entertainment channel. Um, I'm going to step away for a second, but Miss Hart, um, you know, feel free to share whatever you want to share. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm going to go on mute. Are you there? I don't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, now I can. Okay, okay I'll be right back. Was, so, it was my just, browser. Okay. You know, share whatever you want. Okay. So, yeah, we were talking about, I think when I last logged out, we were talking about just immigration and just in my opinion, like how these housewives, um, if they're already in a situation where they're doing something illegally, I don't understand why they would want to like go on TV. Because if we think about, let's say each of the franchises, if you were already doing something illegal prior to joining the housewives, I don't know. You, I think I would just take a pass. I would stop. I, I, I would just take a pass. It seems like whatever you were doing in the dark, once you're on one of those shows, it comes to light. Look at what happened with, um, I think I mentioned with Jen from Salt Lake City and her whole situation. Like for years she was doing, if I, if I recall allegedly, some, some type of MLM, you know, that's that whole business, the whole pyramid scheme. And for years she had been doing that living in the life of luxury you know her husband um he has schooling in a in uh, in law i think he was an attorney but he wasn't practicing at the time of the show so he was like a coach 
And I think I saw something saying like as a coach, he was making maybe like 400,000 a year, but she was really the breadwinner bringing in money from the whole MLM schemes, schemes and scams. And, um, Interesting enough, they didn't own anything, but they were renting these luxury properties, mansions, driving out like they had like a fleet of cars she was wearing. You know, they're in, they're in, they're in Utah, so you know it's cold. She had like a huge closet of all these beautiful clothes and furs, which you know you need there, and um you know, shoes and like jewelry, not just costume jewelry, but beautiful stones and beautiful jewelry. And she had been living that lifestyle for a while. And then boom, she gets on the housewife show. And all of a sudden it comes out that the government wants to investigate or maybe they had already been investigating her and she wasn't aware but on one of the episodes, maybe like two seasons ago, they were going on a trip and the FBI came and cornered um, the, the van that they were taking to get to the airport or transportation they were taking to get to the airport. And um, they, they arrested her. They arrested Jen. So I don't know if the FBI has some division that like watches the housewives but word to the wise like I just don't understand why you would get on this show and be doing get on this show where you were already doing some something illegal and then get on this show and kind of like highlight your lifestyle because what the FBI is doing is they're watching the show and they're now using all of that as evidence um if any of you are fa fans of New Jersey, you know, you remember doing the housing crisis in 2008 and people were like losing their jobs and losing their homes. Well, during that time, Teresa and Joe were like in what they called at the time their dream home. And Joe was in like, you know, the contract business and all that. And Teresa was going out buying furniture for the house. This lady, this is again in like, oh, wait, this lady was pulling out cash. And I remember she had like a, she said something in, a, in one of the clips for the shows. Like, yeah, I heard that. I heard that there's a, um, there's some kind of uh, money issue going on in the U S I don't have that problem. And she pulled out like $10,000. And just that day she bought like uh, $14,000 of furniture just that day. And she was just shopping, just, just pulling out cash. Don't you know the FBI used that clip years later when they were indicted for uh, fraud, they used that clip. So yeah, I, I just don't get that. I don't get that whatsoever. I don't even have that kind of lifestyle, but, uh, I feel like I'm a private person, so I would I, I wouldn't want to be on that I'm here. show. I've been listening to you. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, but wow, that's that's a lot. <laughs> that's yeah, a lot. I was just like just going over. Like, I'm just I feel like in some ways I feel like the FBI has like a secret division that watches the housewives because mm -hmm. every. Like either every year or every two years, some somebody's getting indicted. Let's if we start with uh okay, let's start with Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Beverly Hills, you had one of the richest attorneys in the state of California. Mm -hmm. This man was a he had other attorneys that interned for him. He was highly spoke of, he had won so many awards, he had been quoted. Um, even, even governors looked up to him. He campaigned for them. Well, boom, you know, who husband that was Erica. Mm. And that man, it turns out the story came out that over the years, 
he had been taking clients' money and never paying them their lawsuit money. Mm. He was he was like, you know, giving them like small, like they were like this one, this one kid, um, he, something happened with his skin and his fiance mm -hmm. died. They were living in this apartment building that had asbestos mm -hmm. and it just damaged him. The kid is messed up for life. So he got mm -hmm. like almost a hundred million. And at the time of that documentary that came out two years ago, he had only gotten like two million mm. from Erica's husband. Oh, and so wow. in the meantime, Erica's husband, there on the meantime, Erica's on the show. She has a private jet that flies her to Japan, flies her to, to New York. She's 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 spending forty thousand on her glam. And this kid is not getting he's He's constantly contacting her husband, the attorney that's funding her life, saying, mm -hmm. hey, where's my money? And the mm -hmm. attorney saying, oh, I don't think you're a kid like you should have. He was he was using his client's money from mm -hmm. lawsuits they won to fund his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's sad. Yeah, and how did I, I that come that. out? Mm -hmm. And how did all that, it came out because they were on the housewife show. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, some somebody in the FBI, there must be a division where they like, I'm sure, housewife. high, 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 what they high value crimes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. But yep. to be well, in I the spotlight, what and, do. but to be in the spotlight and not know that someone's watching your every move or stalking you and stalking your finances that's kind of weird that's kind of especially if you haven't done anything really to warrant that but if there's something that you did illegally they're gonna and they find it they're gonna find it you know and it's i just don't understand the ones that were illegal stuff why did you get on the show but yeah. i think that's just greed yeah like I'm it not now. I'm not talking about Portia and her guy, but yeah, like the yeah. that Jen girl from Salt Lake. Yeah. Like you, why did you get? And the thing about it, she kept like she was showing like this green diamond, and she was showing. And you know what's interesting? Mm -hmm. A lot of these people didn't even own their own house. Like mm -hmm. Jen was living in. They call it a um, in Salt Lake. They call these beautiful homes their uh, chateaus. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, mm -hmm. they like to get like beautiful homes on, on nice skiing properties because mm -hmm. the value of the home is, you know, really expensive, whatever. And she's living in this home and she had like help and it turns out she didn't even own the, she didn't own anything. Wow. And she was showing all this expensive jewelry every time, every time they would go out. She would say, oh, I'm wearing these new shoes. They cost $1,400. Oh, this dress, I'm wearing it. And don't you know they used that in her case? Mm. Somebody pulled, one of the YouTube attorneys pulled mm. up the case file when she was going to court. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the uh, you know, the state was saying she flaunted, she flaunted her crime in our face. And they had clips of her on the show. Every time she showed a diamond that she had on her finger mm. or how much this costs or how much that costs. And her husband didn't make enough to afford that kind of lifestyle. Mm. She was, she was doing some type of pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. And did she get indicted? I mean, did yeah, she, she start, yeah, she, they let her stay. Um, like uh, the she went the beginning of last year. She went the beginning of uh, twenty twenty. Let her. She was indicted. She she was guilty. They said she she had a trial and all that, and she was making light of it, talking about oh I need um Kim Kardashian to come save me. Mm. And so the judge gave her six years. And you know you know who else? Mm -hmm. it, it messed the uh, crystalies. You know who I'm talking about? Who? The 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 white family, the crystalies, the Christies or the crystalies. Oh yeah. The white family with the flamboyant husband. 
the blonde hair. He's, yes. All, remember on their show, not, they, they show all they, the they, they know they're going to get caught. I mean, you can't. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You can't flaunt anything without them watching yeah. and somebody telling on you. It, it, people be telling the people on you, too. Yep. And you, um, I don't know if you, I, I watched a few of their shows. They were raising uh, a little mixed race daughter because her mother, her mother, back, and then their son. And the mother and their son both uh, were on drugs, so they couldn't take care of the little girl. So they had been raising her. And they were trying to use that as leverage as to why they couldn't, they couldn't serve time. The judge didn't mm -hmm. care, so they both have um, their federal, federal prison, the wife and the husband, so they're both doing, I think, six or nine years. But mm -hmm. I, I think I saw something recently that their attorneys was able to get sentence reduced, so mm -hmm. they might be home in a couple years. But their oldest daughter, she's now raising the girl and uh her little brother mm. but they so much about money mm -hmm. I, um, I just don't it's best just not to have any money and just <laughs> it's best not to even have no money and just live a, a nomad life <laughs> a modest life yeah yep yeah. for real yep all you need to all you yep. need to have I, is a few dollars <laughs> to your name. And I, and I mean if if we think about one of the biggest crooks, look at Trump. Trump has always Trump loves to talk about how rich he is. Mm -hmm. And he's even said this in recent times. He believes that if he never ran for president, he would not have had all cases. Mm -hmm. So you know who he has to pay? How and much? I believe four, it as well. 400 million? He has to pay 400 million. Uh, to that lady? To, is it to that? To that? To no, the, woman? the lady gets 85 million. But he was just um, required to pay now 400 and something million and can't do business in New York anymore. And so that's what, where his, mainly where his oh, investment oh, are. Oh, okay. It was something about what was it? Fraud? Yeah. Yep. Mm. Now, how is this not happening? Yeah, what's a mortgage what going to do to his, yeah, career, his running for president? <clears throat> I'm sure his, his, the Nothing. back supporters are going to give him back what he lost. Yep. The still, these people him are out. still funding him. Yeah. He not yep. worried about that, but he was pissed off. Uh, but yeah, he ain't worried. Yep. They they don't like that because like uh New York is a you know, of course, a city you want to be able to do business in. A lot of the major financial companies are out of New York. So mm -hmm. and banks. So you wanna and I and I don't think it just it's just for him. I think it's the Trump Foundation. No one with the Trump name attached to the Trump Foundation can do uh, business in New York for what two or three years or something. Mm. So wow. e even Ivanka, well, I guess she could do it under her her married name, but mm -hmm. she's I mean, she's already rich with with that husband. Yeah, because he made money. Um, he made money off of his Jewish friends. Yeah, and then I'm sure Trump set them up with trust and everything. So yeah, still yep. living on free trust funds too. Probably alleged. I don't know because I don't know these people. We don't know these people. I'm just saying, like they in good, better positions than we are. And they and he look at Trump is facing a 435 million dollar, you know. But that man oh, ain't. Fa he is not phased. He's not phased at all. He probably got yeah. so much property that you know. Mm -hmm. But how he got it, yeah. 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 It's a lot and of people controversial keep paying, about they keep that. Into, they keep paying into like Trump. If you go to the if you go to the site, there's even an option where you can like auto pay 
like a small amount as like $5 a day or $5 a week. So just imagine his supporters, even the ones that can't even afford to get on a plane ticket Mm -hmm. and see him, get a plane ticket to see him. They're donating their hard earned money. Yeah. They're funding this man's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And if he becomes president, he's going to get all that money back. Mm-hmm. And I think I think the sad thing is just like for black people is that we've just been the way we've been treated in this country that mm-hmm. we don't trust we don't trust our instinct anymore. And there's a lot of black people that are saying they're gonna vote for Trump. And it just breaks my heart. But who else are they gonna vote for? I I do I think I don't I think both I think the choices that we have right now, they both suck. But I'm not, Biden I'm is not voting. To, I'm Biden not voting is, is, go, is going to Congress, asking Congress to help fund some more of these attacks and all these uh, this war and stuff over there in Israel, not in America, not feeding the hungry, not putting um, housing up for homeless people. And no. you think Trump's going to do? You think Trump would do better? I don't know what Trump would do, but he did I'm something. Just, I, I'm just asking because well, both it's, of them did something for me. <laughs> All I can say is Trump, they, well, Trump they, ain't do nothing for me. Trump did something for me. I mean, he helped with the children. I at, during the time he helped with the, the parents with children, single mothers with children. We got a stipend several times. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Biden he helped with um, dissolving a lot of the student loans so i can say those two are pros but there's a lot of cons behind a lot of that too but, but you know, I, I, i'm just I like no one of them we're, ne- I'm, we're I'm never a democrat or a republican I, I yeah i i am i think like you're never going to have a president like obama didn't really do anything for me but also mm-hmm. i I tend to never get to fall in that box where I'm going to get any kind of support because I don't have children. You know, if my income falls in a certain way, my age or Mm -hmm. health wise or something, I never get those things. But I'm not Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person where it's like I want the best for the most. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't fall in the most, that's fine with me because one day I will, one day I mm-hmm. will be like a senior citizen. One day, you know, one day I'm going to fall in those boxes. So right. I want the best for the most. Mm-hmm. And I don't always see that, see, it, see that it's fair on either side. Now this time around, I will say with student loans, mm-hmm. that did help me. That helped me to get what, what I have to cover me. Mm-hmm. That helped me out. But usually there usually in every election i never i never get anything and i feel like mainly because i'm not in one of those boxes yet mm-hmm. and i but i'm fine with that yeah but I, just, I just think like everybody's always like saying well he didn't do this and he didn't like really people like we just you just got to be realistic there are both parties are always going to suck Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I'm in fun. the middle and I enjoy being in the middle because at any time you know what I'm saying I have the choice to go with who I want to go with or I don't go with neither one of them you know what I mean so. yeah I'm going to always vote like I, I I'm going to always vote like I'm and, I'm and I'm not saying I'm not talking against anybody that doesn't yeah. vote but I'm going to always vote and I know like it could turn it could turn out that my vote went for the wrong person, but I'm always mm-hmm. gonna have a say mm-hmm. in anything that affects, you know, this this country that I live in, that my ancestors were mm-hmm. enslaved. I I just, in my opinion, nothing against it. It feels else, good. I, I mean, I know it feels think, good, doesn't it? It empowers you, but it's not just that. It's just like there's people that have like been um like have felonies wrongfully accused of being having mm-hmm. felonies and they can't right. vote there's so many people that can't vote and it's not fair to mm-hmm. me i just take it the i just like i feel a kind of way when you don't vote really like, well, I, don't. I do i do i, I do <laughs> and that's what i love about me and you we're yeah <laughs> i just do i feel 
I because like and and I'm not talking about you or anyone else, but I I, ha- I find that sometimes the people that don't vote, they're always like complaining, and it's not like. Me. It's like well, you had a if I choice. vote or don't vote. And that's why I've always voted. I've been voting since I was able to get a card. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it was that time when I started seeing the light, I got older and I'm like, you know what? The hell with both of them. You know what I'm saying? I just, that, yeah, it's just, it's just like I'm not you get to that point. You get to that point yeah. and then you make a decision and you stand on what you you're def- firm on what you believe. And it doesn't mean that at any time I can't change my, I have carry my card just like everybody else. I still have, a, I'm registered to vote, but I just can't vote in the national elections. You know what yeah, I mean? I just, I just, wish, I, I just, you know, I, I just think it's so many of us that think like that too. No, but listen, at any time I want to, to vote, I will vote. But the thing right, is, but it hasn't stopped election, me from though. thinking up. But, it hasn't stopped me not one time from speaking But if you don't mind. vote, but wait a minute, you're being a little bit sleety. If you don't vote, mm-hmm. you technically miss that election. It's that, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. But no, see, I'm not. You're changing the goalposts. You, you're, mm-hmm. you're making it sound like... But I carry my card, so at any time I could change my mind. But you also, by the time you change your mind, you've missed that election. Um. Well, the last election that I voted, I think, was for Obama. Did that help you in any kind of way? You're changing the goalpost, no, no. Yes, I did. Because listen to what I said. All I'm saying is, if you don't vote, you miss it. Okay, so I missed it. Right. That's Fair all I'm what? saying. I'm not, don't be defensive. I'm saying like what people say things like, well, you can always just change your mind. Yeah, but you miss that election. You, it's not, it's not one of those things where it's like, well, you already have, you all, you can always do, you can always do it next time. No, you, you know you what an old, um, old little, you know, cliche is you can't cry over spilled milk. You should. Me and you are me and you are like, yeah, but we're saying, I think we're saying two different things. I know, but I'm just saying if I missed it, okay, I missed it, right? right? I can't change that I missed it, but I was intending to miss it. You get what I'm saying? Because I don't agree with neither one of them. No, regardless, I don't think I'm doing my family any justice if I'm, you know, going to vote just because I'm, you know, I hear I, I think I hear I hear what you're saying. Considered I, Republican or Democrat, I'm gonna vote because this candidate is Democrat and I'm Democrat. I'm gonna just vote for him just because I want to have not miss the election, not make my vote not count. No, I'm I don't if I don't agree with that. Uh yeah, and I, I think we're candidate. saying two different things, and that's fine. I think I think that needs to be said. So we're are saying you two vote different for somebody things that just fine. because you de- you Democrat or Republican, you gonna I vote? vote for who I think is the best candidate, even though I believe that they both are always gonna suck. No one's ever going to no one's perfect. No one's ever no candidate is ever going to Give me exactly what I want. I care about, first of all, I care about me, my family, my community, my country, the world, mm-hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. I don't think there's ever going to be there because they're, you know, they're human. We're never right. going to have a candidate. Obama didn't do anything for me. Did I vote for Obama? Yes, I did. But guess what? Which surprised I, I said this to a friend last year and she was shocked when it was Obama and Hillary running. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't vote for Obama, I voted for Hillary. And guess what? I ended up finding out after I voted for Hillary. What I did see the um Ava DuVernay documentary um about the 13th and how Hillary contributed to that. Did I make the wrong? Did I make the wrong choice? I feel like in that case, I made the wrong choice. Then when I voted for Hillary, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. But you know what? I I, I did my civic duty, and okay. and I did my civic duty, and I had a say in it. Even though when I thought about it later, I didn't. But I had I did my part, and I'm not saying that you have to. 
when I'm speaking, I'm speaking for myself. And if I, know, I had children, I know you are. I know you are. If I'm I had children, you. and if I had if I had children, and and in my household, that's what I would encourage them. Like research who you're going to vote for. Do you? But I that just don't take vote, vote counts. No, <laughs> but but do I think do do I want to? You know, it's kind of like this is how I kind of think of it sometimes. You know how like when when you grow up and people are like telling you like you could be anything you want to be. Do you do you recall right. people saying that growing up? Oh, plenty of times. And don't think but that I'm just I'm taking a dig because you feel that can way. Can I finish I'm my like, statement though? Because you, you I can't because can. you'll like move the goalposts. <laughs> you do yeah, so. Do. So what I, you know, when you grow up, people are like, you could be anything you could be. And I was like, tell a JV this one day. I was like, that's really not true. But you never, and 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 I hope you get what I'm saying when I'm saying this, because I know sometimes my analogies aren't great. You grow up telling kids like you could be anything you want to be, but that's really not true. But what we got to understand is. You don't want to you don't want to tell your kids that it's not true because you want them to you want them to do it. You want them to at least try. Yeah. So even though I think our vote doesn't count and and it doesn't seem like the rest of the country cares, I never want to like encourage like black folks not to vote. Okay. That's true. If that if that makes sense, what I'm it saying. makes sense. It makes sense. Hey, I'm not here to say it doesn't make sense, but that's your you opinion. can't. I, I hate people that do that. Oh my god, you can no. say it. if that's your opinion, that's, that, that's your opinion. <laughs> not mine. Oh my god, this is like too difficult. <laughs> no, don't start that. <laughs> no, it is. Listen, listen. You when you say like I'm not, I can't say that you can say it. It's your opinion. Hey. If I <laughs> it, 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 it's 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 a it's just like like that's it's silly to say that you can say it we're having dialogue i if know you, and that's what i'm trying I, to do but I mean, obviously i know it's my opinion i'm saying it there's no like you <laughs> like for you to say but when, when i have my to, opinion you don't let me you don't you, you can it have me. it you just said i can't say Yes, you can. No, That's I can't say you. When I'm speaking my opinion, <sighs> you, you don't want to hear it. You don't want you saying up. No, I don't. I, my opinion is I don't have to vote if I don't want to vote. And you're how most people think that way because yes, we're in America. We have to vote. No, we don't have to vote. You don't have to vote, and you still are. You know, can be a patriot. I feel like I'm a patriot. I just speak the truth a lot and I see things differently from most people because of my background. That's why I'm saying that I don't have to vote just because it's Democrat or it's Republican. I can choose at any time as an independent. We're independent. That means we don't have to vote. We don't we're not going to vote in the national if we don't feel like that president is who we want to be president. You get what I'm saying? So why force your hand to do anything? You shouldn't tell your children, raise your children to go against what they believe just because everyone else is doing it or everyone else thinks it's okay to do. That's not me. So I'm an, I'm an entire You're confusing me. I hope I'm, well, I'm just letting You're you know. You're confusing me. Yeah. How I know I I'm, I'm having dialogue because I'm telling you, you can be a if you're a Republican, you don't have to vote. If you're a Democrat, you don't have to vote. It's not just if you're independent, you don't have to vote. You don't have to vote if you don't want to no, vote. No, I'm not that's, saying it like that. I'm just saying I, me, not just an independent or just a Democrat. Well, that's I what you said. I'm an independent. I don't have to vote, and I'm not going to vote if I don't choose to vote. What is? Can, tell I me said, what you're hearing that I'm I saying. Said, I, tell me what you're I hearing that I'm saying. That. Republican, I would have to change to Republican to vote. Independents cannot vote in the national, right? We can't vote for the president in the national elections. We would have to change. Here in Texas, here in Texas, you can vote because they don't do it like well, that here. Because I, I can't do that. I would have to okay, change. Okay, and that's why. Democrat and I'm only telling. Republican. I'm only adding to it because like misinformation. Because when I voted for the first time here. I was like, I had asked, like, why does it, why doesn't my card say like independent or Democrat? They're like, oh, we don't do that. They don't even give you 
like a card to show you. It, I, my card don't even show what party I belong to. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that's something just Texas is up to, but you know, I, I feel like you're taking me the wrong way. And I like that's bothering me, like to be transparent. Why? Why are you taking it so personal? I, I'm giving you my opinion. That means like my opinion doesn't count if you're getting no, other about you're what adding, I'm saying. I, I don't know. I taking it like too literal like you're it seems like you're adding word like i hear what you're saying but it seems like you're adding all i just told you is i'm in the words that you think are vote. i don't want to vote uh, and i don't have to vote but i can change my voting at any time that's all i'm saying so it doesn't have to do with anything about my ancestors or I'm not patriotic. But I wasn't coming. talking to you, though. I, I know. I know. But I'm just saying that's how people think of when they speak to anybody, like independence. Like, I'm know, so confused. The right I to swear to God, God, I'm confused. OK, well, let's change the story. Because, like, you know, that's why they say don't no, talk no, about no. politics. No, no, no. I mean, I like, <laughs> I like having, like, dialogue. With, I don't, I like, I, I'm just saying that, like, you use some of my wording and so to me, you got to understand if you're using specific words that I use, that makes me think that you think I'm talking about you and I'm not. I, I when I said about ancestors and all, I started off and said, I'm not holding it against anybody that doesn't want to vote. But if it's okay. me, it's in my household. That's this is why I feel like I should do it. Okay. And I well, did say switch, I, at some time at, point, at one point, let me finish. Switched. Let okay. me you so antsy. Mm -hmm. I did say, I did say that, you know, I do kind of like when people, when I hear black people saying that they're not going to vote, I did not go deep into the valley of parties and all that. Cause it's different from what I'm learning, like from living in Texas, the voting system is different. I did make the statement that when I do hear that black folks don't want to vote, it does make me feel some kind of way, but that's, that's, that's their thing. I can't, I'm not here. I'm. It, it's like, and it's I'm gonna okay. say this real quick. It's, it's okay. It's no, not. No, no, I'm not. Cool. No, no, no. I want. I just like to be understood, and I'm very passionate. I understand you now. I understand you. Made I know, it very but clear. I just want to say this statement. Like, it's like, um, if you if you were ever around my close friends or like Jay Z, mm -hmm. I do, and you also know you know this because somebody mm -hmm. close to us didn't say this word. I do not like saying, I do not like anyone calling me the N word. I don't like it being said around me. And when I was younger, I would like get upset and like go back and forth with the person. I stopped doing that when I got mature. And I'm like, okay, I'll, so my, my stance would be, I don't like the word. I don't think we should say it, but it's not. But if you want to say it, that's your thing. But mm -hmm. I don't say it. And people still today will debate with me about it. And I have to, and I noticed that they're debating with me because they think that I'm judging them. And I'm like, yo, I don't like saying the word. If you want to say it, it's on you. And only very few people get that. And I feel mm -hmm. like if you're defending your stance, are you thinking that I'm calling? Because I, I, I'm not talking about you. So no, when you were it's okay. It's all right. We, I'm over it <laughs> at this point. I'm over it. Like I don't pass I, that. I I'm I, 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 I you I'm made yourself clear. Don't take, worry about it. Don't take it so personal, Angie. It, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I, I guess I'm saying, you made your point. I get it. It's I get difficult. It. You don't I feel like I'm it's, anymore. I'm okay. I'm just saying, we just too I different. feel like it's difficult to have a conversation because it's like well, maybe I'm too, too different. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not it. It's like when I say something, then you like it, you get in and you move that. I'm saying like I like to talk and understand, and I'm not like um. I just like to talk and understand. I'm not like a demissive person, and I just want to talk and understand. We're having a dialogue. Like yeah, it's not like we are. That's what I'm saying. It's I'm not, not like even... you. You're gonna like stop talking to me. No. Uh, what? No, not at you're, all. You're right. I let it go. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's 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 no. just it was it's, it's just interesting to have a the way how you know we are different and we see hear things differently. But and that's can great. I make a suggestion and you tell me if you agree or not? If if it's a conversation, why not just have the conversation? That's like people love hearing that 
people love hearing differences. I was having opinion. a conversation. Yeah, yeah. But and don't be dismissive and say, no, we don't have to talk about it anymore. I'm like, it's to me. No, maybe, maybe when I say stuff like that, you know, that's uh -huh. just me. If I'm over something and I don't even want to oh, talk okay. about it anymore, I just move on. Like, that's just me. Like, oh, but okay. Me. My bad. Well, I thought we, I thought like I could finish it and that's. Oh, what no, now I'm just I know. With now me. I know. Like, that's no, the conversation. Now I know. Shut up. That's no, no, no. Now I know. Shut up. I'll shut up. I'll just shut up. No, no I'll shut up. No, I'm just going to shut it. up. No. When I'm finished having the conversation or speaking on it. That don't mean you got to shut up. No, that's the point. That's like when you're having well, you, a conversation with somebody. Oh my Lord. Angie, you're not listening. You, you're not. That's what I'm saying. You're not listening I to am. what I'm saying. But you, just like when I be talking, I mean, you what be talking. What am I missing? I, what, I'm, what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say is like, if I'm finished talking about something, it doesn't mean I stop listening to you. Oh, I took it as shut up because when I continue, you said we we're done with it. We don't have to talk about it anymore. So right. I took it like you. I took. I'm, I'm, you I'm finish trying your to, opinion, though. I'm letting you finish. You see how I was like saying the sentence, and you like came in. I can't finish the sentence, and maybe if you hear me well, finish the sentence, you. Okay, go ahead. I'm, it's your channel. Go ahead. No, but go we're ahead. supposed to be on here talking about things that we, we like to talk about. But when I, I'm over I just, something, I'm just going to listen to you. I mean, like you, you want to keep talking about it. And I said, I'm finished with it. Okay. I hear your point of view. Okay. I just will shut up. No, yeah. like I'm serious. Like I know, like I understand like something can be belabored too much. I can't be long-winded. So that's something like I have to learn for. And I'll just like, I'll just temper, you know, my thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Okay. To make I was afraid to even say something. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm, okay. I don't know. I don't know what to say now. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what to say. I feel like. It's all this, right. It's all right. Let's change the subject. Let's change the subject. Well, politics you lead, like you that. lead, because this is your channel. You lead. I know, but politi politics get people that way. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because a no. lot of people have different beliefs, and and you know what I'm saying. I know you. We are all both trying to get our, you know, beliefs across and everything like that, and it might come out wrong. It's okay. It's nothing to get. You know. I'm not. I'm not. Let me be clear. I'm not. I'm just. I can't. I'm having a. Di I feel like. I'm having a, a difficult time like getting my point across, but maybe it's me. And I just, I know that I can be long winded. So sometimes I think like, you know, people, I can, I feel like I can wear out a topic. And so mm -hmm. I'm just going to take your lead and learn how to, you know, temper myself. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but I think we talked enough about whatever that was, that was about, um, you know, politics and voting and all that so like i said it's just good to hear difference of opinions that's it and it's nothing to really you know expound on e anymore yeah. like i said i'm done with it <laughs> and it's all right so but um we basically had enough of this let's talk about this hot topics with simon and portia and um pretty much that's it i guess because i don't have anything else to say it's 11 um 12 p.m eastern standard time so you know i i really appreciate you know you doing this live with me so don't take it the wrong way or however it came across it's okay like for real like some things i'm just not gonna keep talking about that's it it's no biggie that's how i feel i mean i don't know about how you feel about it but i'm not taking it person nothing personal and i hope you don't i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say either. yeah i'm not I'm, okay i'm i'm not gonna say anything but yeah, i understand I'm, I'm i'm good okay oh no good. i'm good i'm just saying i'm not gonna say anything um, but i'm good it's no it's water under the bridge it's it ain't even anything Mm -hmm. so yeah. no worries no worries but it's just good to let the viewers hear you know
commentary, <laughs> indifferent commentary. So, but anyway, well, thank you, Miss Hart. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. All right. I sure didn't know about the Portia thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, my goodness. That's, that's a shocker. Yeah. That's kind of sad. You know, it is sad, too. That was yeah. her husband. They got married and everything. She seemed very much in love. And yeah. um, and he came and across then as a good guy. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it's is. like, how, it's just funny how things happen. Like, she's she's now she's right about to go on the housewife show. And I just, I, I do feel for her because you know, those producers are going to make that uh, a topic. Um, yeah. And that's a sensitive topic. And we know Portia can, you know. Yep. I hope they pay for it. So I hope they pay for their mental health on that show. Yeah. Cause you really do need it. You knew because you're dealing with a lot of different mindsets. People have gone through a lot of different stuff. You know what I mean? You see Candy's not coming back, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And she but said it's they asked her. Oh. She said they asked her back, but they waited too long. And she she was, like, giving examples. Like, she started doing things, like, that she wasn't ever able to do because her schedule. Like, taking she took her mom for surgery. Her husband had, like, this big dental appointment and she was taking her kids to school and she said she started to enjoy that kind of life but mm -hmm. I, I have a feeling she's going to be doing something else with uh, Bravo because they I don't know they seem to like candy yeah so. she did say that they they have projects in the work I watched mm. the live um, well, um, clips and but other people are also saying that it's because of Phaedra she's not coming back because that's something oh. they bring it to her, you know how well, really quickly, how was Phaedra on uh married to, to medicine? Because I I've only seen clips, so how was how's her dynamic with she dated uh uh quad's ex-husband? Oh yeah, I knew about that, but how was she on this on this show? How did she even get on the show and she married to to a doctor? Um, I think she was dating a doctor. Oh, Somehow okay. she was dating a doctor. Uh, but, you know, if they want you on the show, they're going to get you on the show, the producers. You know what I'm saying? And Phaedra's going to show up. <laughs> Phaedra's on another show, too, uh, about uh, like a uh, mystery show. Did you see that advertised? And they have Sharia mm -hmm. Cherie is on it. It's like they're sitting at this round table and they all have on these capes, like the Illuminati capes and they're in Ireland and um, there's a mold amongst the group and they're all trying to figure out who's the, the murderer, who's the mole and who's the traitor. That's the name of the show, Traitors. So, but Phaedra mm. let them have it on that show. She Phaedra is not bad. Yeah, she loved the bag. She loved she that just, bag. Yeah. She she got the bag too. She she's like yep. one of the jacks of all trades. <laughs> yeah, she, she she was on that Dubai. Well, she was like visiting. She was on the Housewives mm -hmm. of Dubai for a little bit and she mm -hmm. was like, I'm here because I have a company here. I said, Whoa, Phaedra. Mm -hmm. Phaedra says she she running the nursing, not the nursing home, but the funeral home. Child, she running the show. Her little, her son, yep. she gave him like a seventy thousand dollar birthday bash at their house. What? Mm -hmm. He turned thirteen. They grow up. They're they're getting tall. And, but I saw something that said Apollo was on the, uh, the reunion. reunion show. He's what is he on. doing on the reunion show? What is he yeah. doing? Apollo from the come for the bag. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm just put this out here. Any of my family members oh, on the reality? He's coming to get Toya. So no, I'm hiding. My mom said he's coming to get Toya for saying what she said. I, what did she say? He's in prison. Did we dad? Where she said that at? at the party? Oh, at the party in front of her son, right? No, no. Oh. Her son's oh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. But Toya gotta be mindful about uh, what she be saying around her children. 
because you know oh. that's just that's that can effeminate what they call it effeminate, effeminate. no or that doesn't sound right mm -hmm. make the child effeminate. i know what you're talking about mm -hmm. trying to like emasculate them emasculate and, yeah. them yeah. but yeah. I, yeah i know what you mean mm -hmm. she said yeah oh you know toya i don't know she Toya wants to be the head of the show. Like, uh, you know, I, 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 I started just, really liking I Well, I won't say that because I didn't like how Toya came across to, to um, quad the first, oh. first season, the first episode. They were, t they were judging quad and they didn't even know her like that. You know what I'm saying? When mm -hmm. she came to Mariah House, I think that was very wrong of her and Carrie, that the white lady named Carrie. They were already mm -hmm. judging her because she was from Tennessee and all that kind of stuff. But she walked in there very classy and then give them, I mean, she was speaking just like anybody else. And, and look who got in the fight. Toya did. Did you see, did you see Quad's interview with Carlos? Uh, just a little bit of it. Not. She, not she said much. when she started college, she said she knew how people talked about how the girls from Memphis like mm -hmm. their diction, how they speak and this and that. And she said like every Sunday I would get a dictionary and I would mm -hmm. say, hey, let's go over our words. Let's represent, let's show them that that Memphis is smart and we're this. And I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Todd, um, not Todd, Quad, she mm -hmm. represents herself very well. Like she, well. she don't be acting like a hoochie mama or anything. Mm -hmm. She has Never class. Did. I like that she has her hands in a like she can talk about a variety of subjects, mm -hmm. and I I like that, and I think that's that's a great trait for young women to carry. But see, um, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like when you see someone like Quad, who is, you know, raising her raising herself up. And here come these women already prejudging her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And don't know nothing really about her. But I think her and Toya had, must have had some kind of history because I know her, Toya, Quad, and Mariah, they come from the medical pharmaceutical sales. So that's why they were like in, a, in the medical clique too, because, you know, they're seeing these doctors all the time. They go into the doctor's office. They're, you know, selling their sales. Toya was a teacher. She, but she did a little bit of medical sales too, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe from that point of view, before we even knew about them, she didn't like quad. It had to be I, something. I am disappointed on how all the ladies, I understand the issue with Mariah, but I, I'm disappointed at how the, the ladies, um, play down Mariah's role in creating mm -hmm. this show. If yep. if you left it up to the ladies on that show, you would let the, they they almost let the audience believe that this show was created by this white man, Andy Cohen. Like, mm -hmm. give Mariah her flowers. Mm -hmm. She created this show. Like most reality shows are very surface. We don't talk about these women going to college or, you know, having their degrees or having having different types of businesses. And this was like one show where you highlighted like more of black intelligence on reality show, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. Dr. Heavenly and a lot of them, they would say, oh, that that title that Mariah has as a producer, she, it's just a vanity title. They don't mean, you know, Dr. Heavenly, she, mm -hmm. she from Florida. She know how to mm -hmm. roast somebody till they cry. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was like, they just downplay, like, don't. Don't take that away from Mariah. She create. She is the creator of this show, mm -hmm. not Andy Cohen. Tell right. the audience the truth. Get that black woman her flowers. Mm -hmm. But huh. it's just it, it's. And you know I don't care for Doctor Jackie. I'm sorry. And, and I'm sensitive. I have to say that I'm not objective. I just don't objective. understand why. What would make a doctor be this way? That's why I be mm. wanting to know the the internal components of it. What would make her someone who's a doctor who puts herself out, who's had taken a Hippocratic oath, not to discuss private health information? Yep. Oh, Even if and she's not your doctor. Yeah. Huh? 
Mm-hmm. Even if she's not your patient, because I know people people were saying when she said that people were like, oh, because a lot of people don't understand HIPAA. They're like I see people on YouTube saying, oh, this person docs this person's medical information. That's that's a HIPAA violation. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know a lot about HIPAA, but I know that it has to be your you know medical provider. But even if Dr. Jackie wasn't um, that lady's medical provider. She still should. It's it's still disgusting that she said that, mm-hmm. and she's a doctor. Mm-hmm. That's just something. What they call that? Um, etiquette or something? Medical etiquette? Yeah, bedside manner or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would make me, as a patient, be like, oh, I don't know if I want to go to her. She might see me out in public and say, hey, you know anything you know or you just don't you heard what you heard what they say she said about black yeah that was sad like but i was like uh somebody dropped simone for what oh the keisha keisha blogger you ever heard of her Mm-mm. Oh, she dropped Simone as her doctor. Why? Because she talked to Simone. Told Keith, uh, uh, Simone told Jackie. Told Jackie about. Um, that's that's what um, about what's, the, mm-hmm. what's the what lady? What's the lady that um Doctor Jackie uh-huh. first called out? What's her name? You said her name the uh, other day. Uh, well, the um, the tax lady. Yeah, what's her Buffy. name? Buffy. Buffy said that only. Simone knew details about her fertility oh, issues. Simone, and then Simone the area. Yep. She said Simone told Jackie. She said, I never had that conversation with Jackie. Mm. Jack, Jackie just thinks she is like an elitist. Like mm-hmm. she's like high and mighty. You know, it's that, I don't know. I guess it's that. Is, is, is that the AKA way? I mean, goodness. That's that. It is that AKA thing. And sometimes it ain't even just AKA. It's in other like sororities. We have them in all sororities where you yeah. have individuals that think they're just like the elitist really? and they're this yeah. and they're that. And um, it's all, it's all a facade for a woman that probably goes home and cries at night because your man cheating on you and you on a reality show. Because mm-hmm. if you that, if you're like Dr. Jack, he's so critical on, on women, their weight and on this and that and and how mm-hmm. she doing, she eats this and I, I don't drink any alcohol. Oh, and so now I'm supposed to feel bad because I like a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, no shade, but like Dr. Jackie, if you're so perfect, you you making all this money, you're doing all this for your community and this and that, and, and your husband, he's allowed to retire and you're still working. Why would he go and 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 embarrass you and you on reality TV and this you in ATL and you six mm-hmm. foot seven and you walking through the airport holding hands with another woman? Come mm-hmm. on, bruh. Somebody mm. got a perfect picture of him. Yeah, what are the odds? That's why they you, say you can't find. You six foot seven. Well, he's six foot five. You six foot five. Mm. And you going through the airport, and you and you're currently on TV. That's just brazen to me. That, that, is, that brazen. is crazy. You you that you, is crazy. you gonna so I guess cheat he's on one of them. He must be one of them passport brothers. <laughs> no, she was a she was a chick out of ATL. Oh, okay. He was taking her on a trip. They had they had been having an affair. Mm, well, he's going over to Democratic Republican this season. Oh, passport brother. Yeah. Oh, he he said his his son is over there doing business, and he. Got oh to- my God! Oh. Lord, mm. you know, when you to uh, I don't know if you have ever been to DR, but when you go there, even when you go on like little tours, mm-hmm. they'll show you like historic parts. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if like because when I've been, maybe because the crowd was black, I don't know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. They would like, uh, because th- this happened when I went in Panama too, when I was in Panama as well, and they'll point out like, oh, this little corner right here is. You can get five dollars, and they'll like say little sexual indu- induendos. Like you can get five dollars for this 
when I was in DR, they said that to the crowd of us that with the it was like a walking tour, mm -hmm. and it happened in um in Panama. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they just do it because they see Americans and they're like, "Oh, y'all are American. Let's get you to spend your money." Mm -hmm. But if he's going to DR, uh, Dr. Jackie. Mm -hmm. Uh, and no they're getting ripped off by the women. Something happened to women, they just clean themselves up, but they be prostitutes. Yep, and and you know, DR, you know, they have a that number of uh the H word mm. is pretty high. Mm. And Dr. G you remember she like this was the beginning years and she she was like talking to Clifford and said, mm -hmm. you know, we could get a donor, but still use your sperm. And she wanted one last. She's like, I'm healthy. My doctors say like my good, even after the cancer mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I'm fit. I'm as fit as a 32 year old. And she does. She does exercise and looks great. Mm -hmm. And so she said. I, I've already had it checked out. I can carry the baby, but we would just have to use her egg and your sperm. And it oh, broke my she... heart. Mm. Oh, she and her babies. She might she be 60 face. now. They say she's 64. But she, it broke. Because even she can still, you can, because I've seen like where a grandmother was in her 60s and she carried the baby. Mm. They So Clifford told her, he said, no, this yeah. was early on. And he was like, please. He, he, he said, no. When Dr. Jackie wanted to move, sell their house and move into a high rise because she mm -hmm. wanted to be closer to the hospital when she had delivery, deliveries, he said, no. I was like, does he ever say yes to Dr. Jackie? Mm -hmm. Like, so they ended up buying a house. The house is very lovely. You can see mm -hmm. it on uh, YouTube, but mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, that's sad. Oh, I think Doc, I think yeah, I think Dr. Jackie just comes from that time where I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I just don't like her elitist attitude at right. times. Yeah, because she don't feel like she can do no wrong. Yeah. And then I kind of like, well, I would sweet tea cussed her out in front what? of everybody. Mm -hmm. what she, is said, that? she said, she said, F you. And then she said, be it <laughs> in front of everybody, in front of what? Curtis and everything. Yeah. And why? What happened? Jackie, well, sweet tea said, I can't believe something like something to the form of. She was saying how Jack, Dr. Jackie felt the nerve that she could be talking and speaking on her, but when it was her turn to speak on Dr. Jackie, she didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? On her, uh -huh. like you, you sit around and you sat around and, and talked about me and in my marriage. And as soon as I have something to say about to you, you want to be dis dismissive to me. And then so, Dr. Jackie called her. She, we'll talk about this later, little girl. Uh-uh. You know uh -huh. And so you can see T thought about it and she turned around in her chair and then she turned back in her chair. She said, you know what? She said, F you. And then, she, and then so something else happened. She said, bitch, like that. And everybody looked, was like, <gasps> everybody's mouth was like open, like OMG. And you know that old Dr. Heavenly, I don't know why she keep taking up for Dr. Jack, Jackie, like Dr. Jackie can't hold her own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Dr. Heavenly think that Dr. like Dr. Jackie is like, she like she is, she's a god. She treats mm -hmm. her like a god or something. Why? <laughs> she don't want something coming out, maybe. I don't know. You know what? I, I think there there's something to be said about like uh like maybe somebody should do a channel on it or something. Conversations between like younger women and older women. Mm -hmm. That whole dynamic because I remember one time I had like an issue. It was an older sorority sister. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was married and um they were like speaking something on marriage and I, but what I have learned from that, that I just should have like 
not let them open that conversation up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know how like there are like some women out there that like they just they they like men not not in I don't mean in a sexual way but like they just prefer men and so she was just kind of like saying like oh well she should be doing this and she should be doing that but I had just gotten into an argument with my ex at that time mm -hmm. and he was being very agreeable which I am not an agreeable person as you can see. Mm -hmm. I will like I don't I can't <laughs> it's hard for me to shy away from my opinion like I, 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 that's, just, that's just how I am I'm like not like sweet and nice and everything spice and and I was mm -hmm. upset because he was being so agreeable like and I'm like all this stuff that I'm doing as a wife and you like agreeing with her and I was like you know I don't, I don't really think that that's fair for you to say as a woman and mm -hmm. And she was probably like 20 years older than me. And, and she, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was disrespectful to her. I didn't curse at her, but mm -hmm. she like took it another way. And she's like, she was like trying to like bully me in the conversation. And I was not going to let her bully me. Mm -hmm. I was not going to let her bully me. And like, he wasn't saying anything. And she was just like saying like, you, um, I'm just telling him how to how to set you straight. And she was just going on and on and mm. on and on. And I and I was like, not and I did and I would not stop. But my my uh roommate from college told me at the time, she was like, you know, sometimes and I and this is a lesson I have to learn. She's like, sometimes it's not worth it when someone's not getting you, you just need mm -hmm. to exit the conversation and just be quiet. Just shut up. She was like, you just you she was over talking you and yelling and mm -hmm. she said you were trying to over talk her but not yell that's, but that's, what, that's what we was probably doing i was well i was i think Me, i was, I like was yelling it. no Maybe you were, i didn't think loud. you were yelling no <laughs> i didn't think you were person. yelling no i'm i'm loud i think i have a hear but so she was like you just need she was like it's just not worth it like how often do you have to and and then she was trying to like use Bible verses. And I just have a problem when people are like, don't they don't have a fair conversation. And she wasn't having a fair conversation. And he was just being, he was really being agreeable because he is an agreeable person and he was upset with me. So he was like, he was liking the fact that someone was like, you know, kind of taking his side. Mm -hmm. And then she was like trying to just embarrass me. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, I'm going to always stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, like, to, girl, like why her little daughter tried to like uh, confront me? I was like, girl, <laughs> like they told and, and somebody told her like, uh, you better not go over. You better you better take that energy away. But I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to like attack her. But you're not mm -hmm. going to ever like, you know, little girl me. I'm going to talk mm -hmm. to you with respect, but mm -hmm. you're going to respect me, too. I don't I don't care how old you are. Right. It's, you respect me, too. And I and I feel I feel like I learned that earlier in life with like things happening where like you're told to respect adults. And you don't know these yeah. adults could be slimy. Right. So. But she, her daughter came over and she, she basically was like, she, we had a whole conversation. She said she was going to bring over the wrong energy, but she was like, I talked to die and I didn't hear the whole story. My mom was like, my mom, she is manipulative. And she was like, her daughter had joined the organization too. And so her daughter was like, there's nothing, you know, between you and I, like, I she said I the way I understood the story was like like you were like cursing at my mom. I said I would never do that. I, I work in corporate America. Maybe they don't have anything to do with it. But I was like, I'm an officer in our chapter. There's younger women around. I'm not going to we're at a wedding. I, I'm not gonna curse. Like I could use mm -hmm. college words. I don't mm -hmm. have to curse. And so she was like, yeah, my mom totally told that story the wrong way. So mm. it was, you know, it was good in the end, but I ain't got nothing to say to that lady. Like, mm. I'm like, I just, I will just not say anything to her.
Mm -hmm. I'll, if she speaks, I'll speak, but I was like, mm -mm. You're done like um, Malaysia is with Brandy. <laughs> Yeah, she That's tried to look. You, do you know what I'm saying? You know, and them guys be like, "Don't little boy me." She tried to like, mm -hmm. and like, not that this means anything, but she was mm -hmm. like a big woman. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like, not. I'm not being mean. I'm just describing her. But she was like huge, like overweight, and so she had right. like this heavy voice that carried. And she was like, she was like talking to me like. I said what I, you know how Nene would be like, I said what I said. Well, that's what Dr. Jackie was like on there too. She, yeah. told, her, she told them that. She's, she said that twice on the show. She told that to Buffy and then she told that to um, I saw when she said it to Buffy. Mm -hmm. She said, I've said, I'm through. I'm done. You know, like she cut them off like, okay. Yep. And then she didn't want them to f tell their, their feelings, their side. Of how they made, uh, how she made, they made, she made them feel. And that's what it is. She doesn't want to hear it. She don't want to hear when she yep. wants to want to take account. She thinks because she has the credentials, yeah. she's right. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And that's that God-like mentality that yeah. I don't like. Yeah. But like if it, you really analyze her, you she wears the clothes of a young a one, young woman. And mm. I believe she's taking it out. Buffy has had fertility issues. Yep. Sweet Tea is having fertility issues with her fibroids, which is causing her to not have a child. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's taken away from her. This is what I'm, my thoughts. I mean, I'm, you know, who am I? I'm just saying, this is what I'm trying to come up with because why else would she be so threatened by these two women and then go and say stuff about their personal medical history as a doctor and it was i think it's just, i think buffy, mm -hmm. she did that at her event so she yeah. didn't care how buffy felt she felt that she the spotlight was on her and she was using that time to do whatever she wanted to do to to make it seem like, you know, feel sorry for me. I, I can't have a child, but no, don't do that. Don't take that out on someone else because of you, of what you're going through. You can sympathize with people all the time, but you don't have to expose them. You see what I'm yeah. saying? She exposed yeah. Buffy bad, like bad. I don't see how Buffy stood there for the camera time to let them see her crying. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's that crab in the barrel kind of mentality. It's like Dr. Jackie, you no, know, she had fertility issues because of her cancer. And it's mm -hmm. like, so she's she wants Buffy to stay down there and she wants Sweet Tea to stay down there in there with her. Mm -hmm. She don't, you know, she don't want to hear anybody that's near her tight circle that mm -hmm. has fertility issues and they overcome it. Mm -hmm. Like, see, that's that's how I would be like, oh my God, like when I hear of people like you know, having a kid, like I have fertility issues. Mm -hmm. And I, when I hear, like, I have people come to me now because of just that. Yeah. I'm always like encouraging. I don't, I don't want to give them this, this bad news so that, right. you know, their destination to motherhood might be like mine. Mm -hmm. I think Dr. Jackie, in a way, like, I think that's comforting to her. Like, yeah, it happened to me too. Yeah, stay down here with me. But as a doctor, it seemed like you would be, you would want, because, you know, research happens every day and there's new mm -hmm. things. But it's like she, I think she in somehow like likes that, oh, yeah, I have fertility issues too. Yeah, stay down in this hole with me. Or no, I, I don't want you to her. have any chances. Yeah. yeah. Or that they didn't go to her and maybe that's yep. too. And then it's like, you know, it's so misleading because it's like you're hearing this from a doctor and, you know, she's she's um she was like Tony Braxton. She brought her kids into the world. Mm -hmm. She was her um, OB. But, you know, they or they was exposing her saying she don't even take Medicaid to even deal with most of the black Ooh. women. So how would she even know? And and most of her clients are, you know, wealthy clients or high yeah. clients or whatever. 
So try it's just so much. It's just too much. I just say get rid of. No, I can't say that either. But you know, I'm just saying. Like I'm they say, over them. Dark I'm kind of over them. If they don't bring Mariah and and Quad back, I'm kind of over them a little bit. Yeah, they. Uh, well, why did um the other doctor? I really liked her. What? Where is she? Contessa. Oh, Contessa. They didn't bring her back, and they didn't bring. I don't know why they didn't. It was just too much. I think she wanted to work on her family because it, it was a lot. You know, once you get on them shows, oh, everything's okay. coming out. Yeah. And you know, her husband. I really, is, I really like, I really like Contessa. Yeah. I or like as uh, Dr. Heavenly calls her, Contessa. <laughs> but her husband, you know, women in his DMs, she's trying to go to school. She had to go to Nashville to finish, got her PhD. She's, you know, traveling back and forth. Yeah, she was trying to be the Surgeon General. Yeah, she finished. Yeah, she finished, but still, it put a it put a strain on her husband because he was doing a lot of the mommy duties, and he was like, what "The hell with this, you know? I'm working my ass off, and you know, it was just a lot going on with them." And then the the mm -hmm. fighting, bickering with somebody else. I think her and Toya was getting into it, or something. Somebody got into it. With it was her and Heavenly because she had confided in Heavenly, and she felt like Heavenly was like telling her. Mm -hmm. To the group, yeah, but Heavenly Toy did. And her were wow. close Heavenly before. is Heavenly is not to be trusted. Heaven, yeah, they were close that last. They, yeah, they were close that last season she was on because her and Heavenly, even like she was. I mean, she was really hurt mm -hmm. by Heavenly, and I don't know. Heavenly just, I don't know. I I, I want to see who her best friend is because she just. I don't think she, she just has whatever comes to mind. Yeah. Dr. Jackie just, is her only best friend. I mean, I'm just saying that because that's what it makes it seem like on the show. It's because it's she, something no she ain't like friends with. Yeah. Nobody mm -hmm. acts like that. I mean, she's loud. I mean, she is loud. I know we loud. We come from loud family members, people we know, Florida people are loud. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Special. But as a professional, yeah. She ain't even she ain't even close to her sister. And yeah. to me, that's like when it's your like when it's like your sibling, it's one thing when it's like a lot of siblings, you know, you have your different relationships, but mm -hmm. it's only two of them. And yeah. she doesn't speak to her sister. Yeah, her daughter told her mom because she's going to college. She said, I want to see you're gonna be by yourself. I want you and your sister to to make up. And she's like, well, I'll work on it. You know, heavily something else. I mean, I like heavily. Like, don't get it twisted. I like heavily. But heavily, sometimes I need to shut her mouth sometime and let somebody yes. else, you know, work. Because, like, uh, I remember listening to Mariah. She said, some girls come to work and some girls don't. You know what I mean? On the show-wise, I'm talking Yeah, about. yeah, yeah. They putting on a show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Heavenly needs to stop eating up the show, the the time frame, and let other people get on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, you did you did you see what her and Al got into it on TGIF? Uh uh. Ooh, it was explosive. It mm -mm -mm. was with Claudia. With well, Claudia. Claudia was taking a break. It was with Funky, and you know her. You know Heavenly and Funky are good friends. Mm -hmm. And her and Al. It was heavily coming from her know-it-all position, mm -hmm. and it was something about like, like being married to a man and a man who, like, I don't know. Like she said, she threw some dab at Al, saying like, "Well, weren't you miss? Weren't you Mister Star Jones? Because you know he was married to Star." Mm. And he was like, heavily, you don't have to come on this show and disrespect me. Because Al is very professional. Mm -hmm. And heavily was just showing out. She, she'll probably never be invited. And Funky was trying to, like, play the middle because mm -hmm. heavily is his good friend. But heavily is just, she don't listen to nobody but daddy. <laughs> But you know, I did a video earlier today and I talked about the 15 reasons why a married woman calls her husband daddy. And only yeah. number, number nine and number 15, I mean, well, number nine and I think number 11, it was only two out of the 15 that made any sense because they had daddy issues, of, you know, or something, or because um, they're using it 
critically against the the, the husband. Like it's you so know, gross. You ever, you ever look at Heavenly on her one on one or two on? I mean, her one on ones with her husband on the show with the clips. You know how they just sit the yeah. husband and the wife together, and she'll be like, she'll look at her husband and say, "Right, Daddy." You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. she's saying, like she got something over him, or he better straighten up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and I believe that's what she's using it for. I don't think she's using it to be like how Monique uses daddy. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, "Daddy ain't, yeah, daddy ain't, daddy ain't gonna never cheat on me." But mm -hmm. I do, I do think that it's good that she's with somebody that's like the total opposite. Like yes. for me, for me, that's what I need. Like. Like the guy I used to date, I used to be like, I this is what I need because I be on 10. And he mm -hmm. was like, You do be on 10. I was like, <laughs> I know it. I was like, I need you because you be on two. Because mm -hmm. he's he used to tell me, like, I used to be like, Oh, I'm so upset from work. I'm doing this. And then I would say, This is when he would ask me, How was my day? And I would be going off. And I'm like, Why? Wh how was your day? He's like, It was good. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, why you want, why do you, why are you never like bothered by things mm -hmm. with work? He said, because they don't pay me to talk about them after five. When mm -hmm. he said that, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Like he's very like calm nature. And that's, I do like that about Dr. Heavenly's husband. Like he's rational. Right. And you know what else I like that we don't always see with these reality TV men. He do not get in women's business mm -hmm. you know like T.I. Son said I stand on business right and when he's with the men he's not afraid to check check yeah because he checked with somebody he said uh uh hold up don't say all men nothing you know what yeah. I'm saying all American men nothing he was checking um the, the dentist husband what his name Kimi, Kimi. You, you you watched them? You seen them? The is the that girl, the girl? Is she an African or he's an no, African? She's black. She's black. I don't she's know. A, no, I don't know them. Alicia, she's a dentist, um, and her husband. I don't know. He's a dental surgeon. He's a oral surgeon. So both of them in the dentistry. Girl, did you did you see Dr. Heavenly talk about sweet tea to Carlos King? No, mm -hmm. I mean Dr. Heavenly roasted. Like I didn't want to laugh. But you know how Dr. Heavenly is. Uh -huh. She talked, she said, Carlos, have you seen her body? Now look at her body and look at Quad. And she need to come visit my office. Have you seen that grip? I mean, she she went down. It was bad because I was like, okay, that's just she just like going off on the woman. Mm -hmm. She she talked about that woman so bad. And you know that woman, um, she pays to go to that Dr. Heavenly University, you know, Dr. <laughs> She, yeah, I was like, Dr. Heavenly, like, how the girl is supporting your business. Mm -hmm. She talked, Carlos was like, Oh, Carlos was like, I got to put down my, my glass of water. Dr. Heavenly read that girl, and, and she read Carlos for giving uh, for Quad's interview. She said, You gave Quad too many soft questions, mm. and I really think the way Dr. Heavenly has like been in her friendship with Quad has been wrong too. Like joking about Quad sleeping with Common and other mm -hmm. men and Quad. And I feel like when, when, when someone's telling you like, hey, you hurting me, you're hurting me when you talk about my hair or you're hurting me mm -hmm. when you... And Dr. Heavenly's like, it's just a joke. And Quad's like, but it, it doesn't come off as a joke. And somebody could have stopped watching the channel before you said it was a joke. Please do not refer to me in these rumors. I do not sleep with married men. I don't agree with that. And Dr. Heavenly, like, girl, you sensitive and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I need to see Dr. Heavenly's real friends. Because mm -hmm. she just, but she don't do that with daddy. She be like, oh, you know, she'll talk like a little baby. Like, okay, daddy. Mm -hmm. Child. Heavenly is playing her position and playing her role well. Mm -hmm. But I still think some of that stuff do come out. <laughs> yeah, you. it is part of you. <laughs> I do like that the show, like uh, I do like parts of the show, like when Simone and her husband. I don't know if you saw it back then. It's been some mm -hmm. years now. When Simone and her husband were about to end their marriage on one of the reunions, mm 
And she was like, she had already filed for divorce. He had already received the paperwork. Mm. And she was like, I'm done. You're going to take, it was some, it was a woman that was a friend. Tammy. I don't think there was any, mm. I don't know. I don't know yeah, her, her name. She never Tammy. showed up on the show. Yeah, her name's Tammy. Okay. And she, okay. She's like, you're going to take her word and she was like, I'm done. And I love hearing Dr. Simone say from time to time, mm -hmm. like, the best thing this show did for me was save my marriage. I, I love that. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's that's nice I like like, that she had a group of people. Yeah. Right. Yep. Stand and up I, for I, them. You know, like, I want to see black love. Yep. Yeah. Stand and up you for know, them. You, can, you know, when you're in a serious relationship, you don't want to you too bashful or ashamed to bring your friends in and you, mm -hmm. you think you can handle it on your own. So I'm glad that that worked out for them. Yeah. That's real nice. Yeah, that is. And I feel for Quad too now because Quad said to Carlos, Bravo cared nothing about my mental health. Now, I don't know if Quad is manipulating the situation, but mm -hmm. she said, I said on this show that this man put his hands on me mm. and you bring him back on the show without even notifying me. Oh, wow. She said, Bravo. It just feels like they don't care about me. And I was like, people hmm. don't care. They care about that money. Yep. Them ratings. Mm -hmm. I'm this like, is what you signed up for. Quiet should sue them. I'm sorry. Sue they, but sue them for what though? What damage did they cause? Mental health. Yeah, you I mean, brought a man. I, I, you aired the show to millions of people where I said she did say it too. Watched it where she said, You hit me, Gregory, you slammed me to the ground. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, I was, I had, I was trying to get you out the way. She said, You slammed me to the ground, Gregory. Mm -hmm. And she said, I, I tell you that this man hit me, you bring him on the show without even telling me. Now, I don't know if that part is a lie. Did did they tell her maybe, I don't know, did they tell her the day of? But she's saying she didn't, she had no idea. Hmm. Well, I think maybe. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's probably a reason too, the friction with them. It's a part of them probably letting her go a little bit maybe. Because I don't see what, what was Maybe. wrong with Quad. Why would the women even team up on her like that? I mean, yeah, she wasn't bringing something I to don't the show, but don't fire me. Don't, you know, don't round circle me. Don't round circle They were me. saying it was because they were like, we don't see, they were saying we don't see Quad until the show starts. But I'm like, all of y'all are women. Quad is like traveling and being doing her little fabulous thing and she was going to Africa looking for her man. Well, she didn't say looking for him, but she was but going that, to Africa a little the summer. Yeah, but that, and it was no, it's it's not a part of the contract to be all up your butt. It's a part of the contract to show your butt up to tape together. Exactly. Like, together. what's the big deal? A lot of these girls don't talk to each other every, yeah. No, but what I'm saying, that's what I'm what talking real about. Quick, my other what channel, these people about? will team. They will team up against you and get you out of there. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did to Quad. I and I didn't get it either. I was like, "What? Are, I, I don't. What are they saying she's wrong for? Like, they so don't wrong like that, that she want to kick her off the show. They don't like yeah. that she's single and traveling. What do you think about the thing? Monique? What do you think about the whole Monique thing and her son? I think Monique need to let daddy get out the way, uh, get out of her ear and, and shut it down and go heal with her son because she had all this time yeah. to build a relationship with him after the fact that she made her millions now. But now it's time to, to build, learn about your son, get to know him, fall in love with him, um, fall in love with his daughters and children. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's wrong. She's the mother. She's supposed to set the example, not the son. He, did you see? Did you see where he said? And I was just like, wow. Where he said, I find it funny. He's being upset with this, upset with us, and it's because 
a week, two weeks ago, he wanted to call me. He wanted me to be okay with him calling me dad. And I told him, no, I am Uncle Sid. We know your dad. And I'm saying to myself, why would I call my mom's husband uncle? Yeah. Uncle like, Sid. Yeah. <laughs> that that you don't didn't even see, sound you right. Didn't see, even in some of the text messages when he, he done took over the conversation, he said, this is Uncle Sid speaking now. Well, is the son her her brother's child? No, her hu he the husband is saying that the son is up Monique's son is upset because he wanted to call Monique's husband, whose name is Sid. Yeah. He said he wanted to call me dad. I will not let him call me dad because he has a father and we are friends with his father. I am Uncle Sid to him. So he wants his stepson to, to call, call him, him Uncle Sid. Sid. That's just all crazy, though. That That's is so crazy. crazy. I was like, you're technically his stepfather. How, mm -hmm. It's not far-fetched for him to call you dad. Right. He told him, no, I am Uncle Sid. I'm like, I said, this daddy and this, I said, I just. That's what I'm saying. This, this is all too much. Up. If yeah. you, she was molested by her brother. Yep. And from then on, it's, that's what she said for herself, that she was very promiscuous. And yep. Because they say that's a sign, too. Yeah. You know. And um, but the thing is, it's toxic. That's toxic behavior. That's why they say money can't uh -uh. money can't make your life any better than it is. You have to want it to be better. You know what I mean? So, but I I believe the son. I believe he didn't she didn't want to have nothing to do with him when she was in her early days trying to go make a life of herself or a name for herself. She dropped that boy off with whoever to take care of him. And that was it. But still, that's why I use like, I'm not trying to, you know, I ain't worshiping none of these people. I'm saying, I don't know them. But Taraji, she went on to um, LA and made something out of herself, but she had a relationship with her child. He was living with, she left him with her parents, you know? Yeah. And I think the son understand. I think the son it, like understands his mom's sacrifice, but it's it's something about like with with her husband saying that whole thing like you can't call me dad. That mm -hmm. makes me believe like they created some kind of separation in the household. Yeah. And as a mother, like like you said, we don't know these people, but just looking mm -hmm. at what we have and just for commentary purposes. Mm -hmm. If you look at like Sierra and her oldest kid is from future. The other kids are from her husband. I mm -hmm. see how her husband, this is just what I see. It could be wrong, mm -hmm. but I see how her husband makes a huge effort to unify that family where that, where wow. her oldest son does not feel like, Oh, you, you're the kid from the other man. Mm -hmm. He calls him son. Mm -hmm. You know, the kid, the kid calls his real father dad. Mm -hmm. And I think he calls Ru Russell um, Pop Pop or something like that. Mm -hmm. That that's that's some grown man shit. That's some mm -hmm. real that's like caring. Like this kid is an extension of your wife. Why mm -hmm. would you not? Why why do you want this kid to call you on? That's, like this is so weird. That's some weirdness. Weird. Yes. I'm talking about sexually perverted weird to me. Yeah, like, it's no like boy. Moni, all this daddy, and he talking about y'all talking about she call call me daddy, but y'all forget I call her mama. I said, Lord, this is too much <laughs> for me. I can't. I had to clock out. I had to clock out. Oh, I yeah. like, but I, I said, I had said, if Cat Monique, if you don't keep going back and forth with your son, you gonna get booed at that stage. Oh yeah, people already upset. Mm -hmm. You know they were on her side because, um, you know, I, I, I really, you know, there's a lot that I like about Oprah, mm -hmm. but I do, I don't agree with what happened with that situation with Monique. And I think Oprah has that elitist attitude too. Mm, I think of she, course. Yeah. I think she's, she's another that. Dr. Jackie, but bigger. Yeah. Oprah tries not to be so forthright with it. Yes. 
She still uh -huh. has a humbleness about her. Uh -huh. Still has a human feel uh, with hers. She know how to relate to people. That's why she can interview younger people and older people. But she's no saint. You know what I mean? But but she, people have put her like she's some saint, uh -huh. and that's and I think it's gone to her head. Yeah. But once Taraja came out and started talking, I'm speaking of that humble Oprah guy, I'm sure. Did you, did you, I don't know if you've seen though, but Monique put out on her channel, if you watch the Oprah show, she had a long time makeup artist that had been with her since her early days. Reggie something, gay black mm -hmm. guy, did mm -hmm. her makeup. He came on Monique's show and he, he said, I'm going to speak up. Because I don't like, this is not the Oprah I knew. And he said, you're not lying. I can tell you when the change came about. And it was a whole interview where he was talking about Oprah. And he said, Oprah had got to the point in later years when he was doing her makeup where if he said something where he didn't agree with her, he said she would just put me on vacation. Hmm. And what that meant was he he would... It was her way of showing her, showing him, I can replace you. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, she wouldn't have him doing her makeup. He, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to come in the offices for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. And he said, like, he, he would like set her straight. He was like, you can keep, I'm never, I'm never going to stop speaking my mind because you're not my God. You may be a god to some of these other people, but not to me. That man was like speaking his truth on that interview. And mm -hmm. God rest his soul. I think he passed away like a couple of months ago. But the interview was from like a, a year ago. Was he old? He's like Oprah's age. Mm. Yeah. He's, he, if you watch the Oprah show, like he would come out sometime. You would see him like touching up her makeup. He's done like books. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he he um, he he got a lot of fame from doing Oprah's makeup. Like, I think he even like won awards, which he was saying was like unheard of mm -hmm. early on for any makeup artist, especially for a black makeup artist. Mm -hmm. But um, he did her makeup for years. He passed away like maybe maybe it's been a year or not even a year. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if Oprah did any acknowledgement. For him, because after he, you know, the interview had came out, you know, some time before he passed away. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure she was upset about that. Mm -hmm. And you could tell he was telling the truth. This was a man that was by her side. He, he traveled with her. Mm -hmm. But that was her way of like, you know, chastising him, like. um, he would get he you he, he said he used to come from Oprah that he 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 had to go on vacation, and then he just would start getting a note or something like from one of the producers. Mm -hmm. Hey, we don't need you for the next three weeks. Mm. You think he, um, they're gonna do Taraji that way, or no? Because I think it's come out and Oprah had. If you notice, Oprah's been doing little stuff to kind of make it seem like no. She's not talking about me. And Taraji has came out and said she wasn't speaking of Oprah. Anything, this has nothing to do with Oprah. Mm. It's the production company and all that. Mm. Um, I think if anything, um, Oprah's going to try to like make her, try to help Taraji because she already knows how people are looking at her from this Monique stuff. Mm -hmm. And then with Taraji saying what she said, you know, mm. You know Oprah, Oprah's going to try to pull the wool over our eyes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Fantasia didn't say too much about it, <laughs> what, what uh, yeah. Taraji was saying. She knew what to say and not to say. Yeah, because I, 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 I think I wondered about Fantasia because if, if, if you remember, some people may remember one, Fantasia did the she was the first Seely, Miss Seely, for the Broadway show mm -hmm. of The Color mm -hmm. Purple. She did an excellent job. But I thought it was just a little cruel that, like, I don't know if it was her doing or Oprah pushing, 
But right before she had did that show, that's when she tried to commit suicide. But they were able to pump her stomach and get, you know, get the pills out. Because it was like, uh, it was during that time when, you know, that whole controversy where, because her second son is by, like, uh, some guy that worked at T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. And, you know, South Carolina has them old, North Carolina has those old, like, rules about being married on the books. And so they have some kind of, like, law, like, if you intervene with a marriage. Mm -hmm. And this woman was still married to the man that she had a baby with mm -hmm. and uh she sued Fantasia and got like a hundred thousand. Mm. That 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 man that uh Nene was messing with, that mm -hmm. African guy, his wife tried to do the same thing and sue Nene. Mm. But it didn't she didn't she didn't get the money. But Fantasia's because I think you gotta like prove like they were really together. There was some intimacy. And of course, Fantasia was pregnant. So mm -hmm. the woman got like a hundred thousand from that. And um Fantasia tried to her life. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, she was going, she was doing that uh Broadway show. And I was like, man, she didn't even break. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I was like, I wonder if Oprah made her pushed her out there yeah maybe because she was Did under these so many contracts too you know these countries said yeah, she was that's true. Bankrupts twice she lost it all I, re I hear those clips that she talked about she said that Tyler Perry helped her she said if it wasn't for Tyler wow. Perry yeah. she stayed with him or he brought her out of it like he done helped a lot of people you know yep yep so. yep Sometimes, you know, it's hard to speak up and it's hard not to speak up because you don't want to offend people. But sometimes some people just need a wake up call, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. They don't want to talk they, about just their own. They, they think they'll lose. Career. Yeah. But it's sad how they much they pay the black. Actors. Yeah, because there's <laughs> even people. Yeah. Yeah. We mm -hmm. we don't get a lot of stuff. The promotion that yeah. that we should. It's hard to sometimes get some of our movies in theaters. Um, yeah, but but the Terrence Howard, I I listened yesterday. I was listening to his. They did a clip of him, like some of the reason why he didn't get paid. Now he's a brilliant actor. He's a brilliant person. And it was a lot of his fault that he wasn't getting paid. Yes, he wasn't getting paid paid as a as a black actor. He wasn't getting paid as he should. But he was doing some things on set that was causing him to irritate, you know, the executives and stuff like that. So he kind of had was a mm -hmm. hindrance to his own self. You know, he was replaced in some of the movies. Yeah, um, they lowballed him. Like one person, this guy on one episode was getting fifty. He was getting a, a million a episode compared to to, to Terrence getting fifty thousand dollars an episode. A white guy was getting one million, and Terrence was getting fifty. It's, That's a big stretch on a high. He was on power getting fifty thousand dollars. And mm. this guy was during the same time frame, and both of the shows were super. You know, all the fans was raving over it. The white guy was getting one million an episode. He was getting fifty thousand. You know, is it? I just think like though in those industries, or even just even our like everyday work life, people don't mm. talk enough about. Uh, you know what goes on in like interviews and salaries like mm -hmm. you know hr makes you think that you can't talk about salary but mm -hmm. if you look at your business conduct like there's nothing wrong with talking about your salary because mm -hmm. i know i was in a situation where i that last company i worked for i had worked at that time i had worked for the company for like 15 years and i remember this girl she i'm, I'm just saying she was white mm -hmm. white um, she's probably like t maybe 10, seven or 10 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And just, just giving a description, she had like implants because her mom had passed and she, she was like, 
she took the money and got implants. She she was, you know, pretty little girl. And mm -hmm. it really wasn't her fault. And one day I'm I hear her on the phone because she had moved to the area. And she was like, uh, she would only live in the area. She was only like staying in the area for three days out of a week. And then she would go to like another area of Florida and work from home. But anyway, she was buying a car and she was giving them her salary. And we weren't, we didn't have like offices. We just had like huge, like cubes. And mm -hmm. when I heard that girl's salary, I want to say it was like 11,000 more than what I was making. I almost lost it. Mm. I, I could, and I was in a tough situation because my ex had lost his job. I was the only one working. I was so upset. I was like, I'm quitting. I was like, I'm looking for a job first. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I will even take a lower pay because this girl had, I had 15, this girl had like two years. They, they didn't care about college, but she was, she had no college, but two years at like another like similar company i could not believe it and it wasn't my current boss's fault because mm -hmm. he did not hire me when it was all said and done it took maybe a year a year to complete everything but immediately in three months they did something because i lied to them and said i started interviewing but i lied to him and said you know, I told him that I was looking for a job somewhere else. And I mm -hmm. had to like, I, I had talked to this older woman because I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate. I, I think I just be wanting people to understand me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, like telling me like, hold back your emotion when you talk to them, like, let it be business. Like hold back. And she was like, let's practice. And that, that was like so great for me because I wasn't emotional. I was making it about business. I was like letting him, letting him see it from my perspective, mm -hmm. you know, didn't use emotional words, whatever. And then he said, he said, well, how much do you make? And I told him, he was like, you don't make that much. Cause remember by this time in my career, he's probably like my 10th manager. Cause mm -hmm. I had worked in different departments and he mm -hmm. didn't even hire me in that department I'm in. He was like, you don't make that. I said, yes, I do. Which I still thought was like a decent salary. And he said, well, well, why do you, do you, th he said, you act like you think somebody makes more. And I said, I believe so. He said, how do you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, I just believe so. Like people talk, people talk. And I said, I don't know. I just, I just believe so. And then he said, um, he looked at things. He said, I'll get back with you. And then he came back. He said, and this was his words. He said, somebody effed you over early on in your career. Mm -hmm. He said, and because it was HR that signed off on. And I remember when I was coming to that department, I had asked for more. And I remember like you've heard of work day. So it was like a system mm -hmm. like work day, mm -hmm. but it wasn't work day back then. And it kept bouncing back and forth because I kept, we were trying to negotiate, even though I was already at the company. And the hiring manager in that particular part, department at the time was okay with the salary that I, that I add, the increase that I asked for when I was coming mm -hmm. in the department. But the HR person who had been with the company for years, she was like, no, she doesn't tell us what we'll pay her. Mm -hmm. And she rejected the increase I asked for. And I remember that manager saying, I'm sorry, we'll figure out how to get you to that level. And it never happened, but I was just like, okay, I think I make a decent salary. I didn't know till I heard the girl making all that money, but I'll say that manager at the time when he saw that and he, he pulled my employee files, there was no reason why I should have been that low I had the lowest salary and I was like, uh, probably the, it was, it was 27 people in the department and I was the fourth, fourth, third or fourth, like, high, like with the most, like most senior person in the department. And I had the lowest, do you hear me? Mm -hmm. I had the lowest in the department. Even my good friend, who's like one of my best friends, 
well, I won't even talk about that, but she had a higher salary, but that's a whole different situation. Um, but this little girl, I, I just could not believe it. And so he said, I'm going to work on it. He worked on it and he got me like a better salary. My like, he was like, okay. He was like, well, you're going to have to start doing, he said, you know, it's not fair what they did. He was like, but you know, just to justify, you got to take on more work and we got to change your title. So then I had got my title of senior engineer and I was like, I'm fine to take on more work because that helps me in my career. And he got, he got me to the salary I needed. Mm -hmm. It was high. It was higher. It was even higher than that girl's. And um, it put me on like a better track. So then when bonuses come, you know, I'm getting, I, when they did give out bonuses, I would get a bigger bonus. And for five years, like my ex was not like for four or five years, he was not working. And, you know, I had got pregnant twice during that. All this stuff happened. I did need that, that income. And, and just a little note, his family name is my family, if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? But he's not black. Mm -hmm. Has the same family name. Because mm. when he pulled my employee records, you know, it, it says like your mother's, you know, maiden name. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey. I was <laughs> like, what? He was like, I didn't know that was your, your mother's maiden. I was like, oh my God, yeah. I was like, yeah. And he was like, hmm. Um, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, he made he made it right. They fired uh -huh. him like seven years later. But he made he he made it right by me. And I like oh, I that's always good. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And he told them, he told them too. He was like, she's uh a nut. He I lied to him and he don't know that. He lied to his bosses and said. You know, our competitor is already looking at her for this job and we can't we cannot afford to lose her. We'll lose X amount of contracts if she leaves. He mm. made it right. That's good. Yeah. So it's like it's 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 unfortunate that like, you know, like I would have never known. He said he said somebody screwed you over. He said somebody in HR back then when you they like he was saying they set me on the wrong like salary path. Mm -hmm. mm. They, yep. That's it. Yep. And that's what was happening with a lot of people. Yep. It's not fair. It's, I mean, like it's not. Yeah. That's why I don't know. Should and if you be? don't speak about it, if nobody if nobody says it out loud, you never know. Cause that whole time I thought, oh, okay. I was like, it's decent what I'm making. Like mm -hmm. But and you got new people coming in making ten thousand more than me. That's ridiculous. Wow. That's that's just yeah, flat out ri ridiculous. Yeah, yep. Mm, and they get us a, a lot like that because we don't discuss. You don't. Yeah, you know, that's like etiquette. You don't discuss it now. Yeah, you get a good Judy in there, and they be like, "Hey, listen, this is what I'm making, and you yep. tell me what you're making." Yeah, okay, but. That's the only way we're gonna know, but we're not gonna know that because yep. then we're competing against. And they say that like white men with less education in the same role and less experience oh, yeah. make sometimes three times more than a black woman. Mm -hmm. It's just whew. yeah, because look who look who owns some of these companies too, mostly mm -hmm. male, you know. I don't even want to say who owned the company I work for because it's like when I saw that, I was like, oh, Sometimes wow. Sometimes you have to Google the company and see how much their revenues are. You mean to tell me you're not asking for a raise every six months? Yeah. You really, you're going to be behind if you don't ask for a raise every six months. But some see some of these companies who um, hire you like let's say for instance you're looking on the job from indeed like like some of us you know i'll say customer service they're already going to tell you how much the 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 range is that they're looking for and it's low anyway but that's the mm -hmm. thing even though you get in there with that low amount that don't mean they didn't tell the other person your starting rate is this you know what i'm saying 
Some mm-hmm. of them will say, mm-hmm. no, we're only we only hiring for this amount. The whole, everybody's getting hired this amount. But you really don't know that. Yeah, they have low, like this this young guy that works with me. He's like uh we were at like an employee event late last year and he was like, "Oh, you see our benefits are going up." And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, you know, I'm not sending my wife back to work." And he was like, I'm setting up a meeting with, you know, such and such. And Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have to like give me an increase for that. And, uh, you know, the area we live in, the taxes have gone up. Mm -hmm. And um, he said he said he was going to point out personal things. And I'm I'm sure I can't really like ask for much now because of like my health history and everything that's been going on. But Mm -hmm. I could tell like they really like him and I could see how he's probably going to get get that more more money he was like oh they're gonna have to give me this he even told me he was like and um just don't be surprised but by the end of the year you know i'm letting them know that i that i need to be a director i said oh okay Mm -hmm. he said i don't know why women aren't Mm -hmm. (laughs) go-getters because he was like yeah i i see that how like much more we make way more money than 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 women and then he was trying to ask me what I made and I just like ignored him, but I'm sure like he's uh he's doing pretty well because I was nosy. I was nosy bronze. Mm-hmm. And he's from New York. And this is nothing bad. So mm-hmm. and uh cause cause he looked up my information because I made a mistake and I was too specific on my resume with the city I lived in. Mm-hmm. But um, I looked up the city he's in and the county, and he's like 35. And I looked at the house he's in, and I said, oh, wow. Yeah, you you making – and your wife ain't working? I was like, I know he looked up my house, and at least it fits, but mm-hmm. – Cause he said, like, if, he said, man, if I was in New York, my house would cost millions. And that made me like, I said, well, let me look. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think? You've been keeping up with the Fanning Willis trial? 